So now taking my 2B pencil, I'm now going to start shading in the apple stalk again. You see I'm starting looking and it's a little bit lighter on one side, on this left side, and then it gradually gets darker on this side, very, very slightly. And under the top there, very top, it's like slightly darker there. And then it's got kind of a bit of a rough top to it. Now, make sure your pencils are reasonably sharp when you're doing smaller areas like this. Okay, so I'm just going to go over that now with a 4B. I don't get the shiny looking. Remember I said this was like one of the darkest areas. And then I'm just going to finish off with the 6P. Keeping those movements going slightly circular again. Right, I'm going to leave that as it is. Now the, back, the background to this is quite light. So I'm not going to do a lot difference to it. I'm just going to make the bottom of this part a little bit darker using my 2B. And the same here. You can see here, this is like the front edge of the apple where the highlights, um, the light's touching it. And I'm just going to bring that, use my rubber to bring that the highlight along there a bit more and then go into here with my 2B making it a little bit darker and then coming out I'm not going to worry about putting any of these marks in yet I can put those in at the end They're just the marks that you get in an apple and bring that over slowly leaving marks so because we're, we're going over now with another um, shade just being a bit more careful about how I do these marks I'm using shorter strokes because this is just a small area okay and then I'm going to blend that again Starting again with the blending stick, go from dark to light here. And keep that darkness in that dip in the top of the apple. Just blend it out. Now if you find your hands going over what you've done before, just use your tissue to rest your hand on and that will stop it from smudging where well, you don't want it to smudge and also there's quite a bit of oils on your hands and if you get oil on your paper when you come to draw on it sometimes you can't draw on it properly so what I've ha what's happened here I think I've got something on it and it's not taking the, the pencil very well I'm just going up close to that stalk but trying to leave it a little bit lighter this side and bringing it out and over the top. Now this edge here is quite a distant edge and to, to make it more distant you can just lightly just rub it again because when, when edges are away from you you want them to be softer as they come closer to you they can get harder so this one we can soften. Can you see how just by using the rubber there it's just softened that edge. This edge at the front here using um, to be here I'm just going to make this line a little bit darker because it's coming towards us and we want this highlighter pit here to stand out. I'm just going along that edge 
just blending that in to make that darker and it will leave this then lighter think about your darks and your lights all, all the time okay, where you've got shadow so coming around this side this doesn't need a lot of work doing to it at the top because it's got the most light but as we come down the side down here it starts then to get a bit more shadow so again using my 2B remember we're building up the tones my 2B using my pencil slightly to the side and holding it towards the top of the pencil so it's a nice light pressure. I'm just going to bring this round. Bring it down. You can see by putting in that first layer with your HB you're getting rid of that the whiteness of your paper and then it helps you to get the tones better and keep squinting at your um, photo so you can see where those darks are. <clears throat> and just half close your eyes and then you can see it a lot clearer. Now you could do this just by getting an apple and, and drawing the apple um, straight off but I think when you're starting off doing it like this you really need to um, get the photograph in black and white just to help a little bit more. It just takes away one of those other things to worry about. It just takes away some of that here. This outer edge I really want it to be quite sharp because not sharp as such but um, not have any feathery bits so I'm just going to go around the edge I'm just going to take away some of these feathery bits that I had because an apple is very smooth and that those feathery bits are what I did when I sketched it So it's just little things like that to make the difference. I'm just using the paper just to help brush away those rubber marks. <coughs> okay. And I keep getting a tickle in my throat today. I do apologise. Just have to stop and go and get a glass of water. I think it's because I'm using my voice talking and it's just irritating me. Right, so I'm coming round again, so keep following the contours of this apple. And you can see I'm lightly shading again on the side of my pencil, slight side and up to the top. Around this bottom. I don't want to go too dark at this bottom because the shadow underneath is a lot darker. Let me put that in the moment. This side needs to start to get darker. We're building up in layers, remember, so we're just again going over with the same <clears throat> pressure as we have this side, then we'll go over with a darker pencil. As I say, you don't, you can increase the pressure if you haven't got the different uh, shades, grades of pencil, but it just, it's worth buying a set to be honest because, you know, it just helps you improve. You can get away with using a, a, an HB or just a 2B and a 4B, and there are shops that you can buy them separately, you don't have to buy the whole team. And some of those websites are told talk about in my other video which is Art Saver and Art Way they are quite good at buying single pencils and things like that but of course Hobbycraft do them as well WH Smiths, Coleman's and Rushton they're all good places to buy individual pencils Can you see now how I've built that up? This side is going to be darker. I'm just going over again with this even tone. <clears throat> Leaving that little highlight. 
which we can use the rubber if we want to if we forget and we go over it it's not a problem then I'm going to blend it in again so I'm going to use my paper stump I'm going to come down and this time I'm coming from light to dark I want to follow the shape of this apple dragging it down now I've got this feathery edge again around the side here which I'm going to get rid of Dragging that down now you can work in circles if you want to, or you can do it like this, bringing it down. And you can use the side of your bending stick as well. Now you can see that's blending nicely to leave this area here where it's a light bit lighter I wonder if I can speed up these, air these um, areas on the video just so you're not watching the whole of me filling this in I'll try a little play and see. So here I'm just blending that dark to light now, spreading that out. This. Okay, now what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go with my 2B just to put in some of this shadow underneath because I need to be able to get the tone right for the apple. So we're just going to go with the 2B, it's going to go over this small area, it's quite dark. So it's going to be darker under the apple, so near the edge, it's going to be darker and very, very slightly getting lighter as it comes away. I'm just going to blend that. That was my 2B. Now I'm going to use my 4B. Again, make it darker where it goes under the apple and then it gets a little bit lighter as it comes away. Use your blender and start in the dark bit and then pull it away. Now using my 2B again I'm going to fill in the rest of the shadow. So we're going to go over, I'm going to keep it the lines flat this time so it looks like it's sitting on a flat surface. And I'm going to do an even tone all over. And it is like a site an elongated circle, a shadow. The lights come from this direction. Okay. And obviously this bit must be slightly higher and it's just catching the light. So then we're going to blend this. So we're starting from the edge of the apple and pull it out. So that's where it's darker. Now this edge, I said to you, will, will move, rub some of this away where I draw the drew the outline before where the shadow was. So I don't really want that line to show. So coming away from the apple, you're going to bring your blending stick or your cotton bud out and just you can use 
circular motions you can use it's going straight the same way as you did with your pencil it doesn't really matter as you get to the edge it's, it's easier if you use circular motions because then you don't go over the line too much <coughs> And I'm just going to go back my pencil. I'm just going to create this other slightly darker area. The shadow here. It's not a really dark shadow, this part. <coughs> Excuse me. Now you'll see now that we're starting to get towards the end of it. But this part now, the, the tones are too even. <coughs> so what we need to do now is to go over and make this apple darker against the light background. So I'm going to use my 4B. I'm going to go from the edge here. But it just changes from where the shadow is. And I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to make it slightly darker. We want to leave this bottom bit here lighter. And the shadows because the shadow's dark. Now that we want to then go on to do this bit, which is darker, against the lighter shadow. We keep looking at that all the time. Again, doing a nice even tone. On the edge, it's really quite dark around here. I'm going to build it up with my 4B pencil. You can go over the top and that will make it darker as well. Rather than just pressing harder. Build it up. We want to keep this part light as it is. <coughs> and then this part gets darker. I leave that white light. You can see I'm now doing shorter pencil lines, but I'm going over some of the areas I've been before to try and make it a bit darker using my 4B. So if you want more texture, then you can use a watercolour paper, got more texture. If you want it even smoother, and use something called Bristol board paper and that's very smooth. 
it's a bit of a minefield all, all the types of paper you can get but um, it really does make a difference what you use to the outcome and sometimes you know you can have a preconceived idea of what you want to do and then you're not happy with the outcome quite often that can be the materials you've used or the paper that you've worked on or the brushes you've used I know they say a good workman shouldn't name his tools but I think in art it certainly does make a difference I say it's nothing more frustrating than going out buying a set of paints and using them and then finding they don't the colours don't bleed like you thought they would they don't react on the paper like you thought they would um, it really does make a difference so I always think buy the most expensive that you can research it you know Cop Winsor Newton Cotton colours have been around for years and they're quite good um, the student quality ones the artist ones are a lot more expensive I've got my big pan of paints as um, St Petersburg White Knights watercolour paints I've also got a selection of Daniel Smith watercolour paints but those you can pay like £10 for a small tube so unless you're really serious about it um, they are really expensive but you do get the vibrancy of colour you get the intensity you get the you get the transparentness of them all sorts of different things and advantages of having them some of them do what we call granulation they kind of break up to give a lovely texture and yeah that's Daniel Smith's but you know buy five of those and you've spent 50 pounds so not everybody wants to spend that amount of money on paint so can you see I've just blended this in with the cotton bud and try and get that even side and it's starting to look a bit more like the apple now isn't it I've created the this area here it's kind of like slightly darker I've left that little white area there bringing this dark to light here leaving that white bit along the top there I'm just going to get my Tombow rubber and it's going to take out a little bit more in this highlight I really don't like to come off the paper this, this rubber I blow it but I'm just going to take that out there and then I think I'm going to take a little bit more off around the side here. And a slight highlight here. Careful when you rub it that you don't smudge something that you don't want to smudge. So this is how that's how you can use your rubber to just take out bits that you're not happy with. Now we blended this in, so we're using, going back with my 4B, I'm going to, there's a slight sort of lightness down here as well, so I'm going to just even that out a bit. In fact, I'll use my blending stick here just to come around this edge. And then I'm going to make this area here just slightly darker. So that's probably one of the dark areas. You say keep closing your eyes, squint well not closing them, but half closing them and squinting at it. See where those dark areas are. Get those in. See where the highlights lights are. And if you need to take some off, do that. And just keep building it up. And then we can have a look and see where the blemishes are and add some bows in just to make it look more like an apple. I'm just going to blend that in again. Hmm. 
excuse me. Now, you can see this, there's like a little blemish here. I'm going to put in. I don't want to make it too dark because it would, wouldn't look part of the apple if I do it too dark. And then I'm obviously not going to copy every single blemish that's on there. Just put the odd one or two in. I'm using my 4B for this. Just little tiny circular motions. Come in there. And then there's a slight dark um, blemish here. And even using my 4 b four and here, and then slightly darker one here. Just blend those in. And then maybe I'll just dot on top of those just to those in a little bit. Now once you get graphite on your blending stick you can actually use that as well to make marks. So if you wanted some lighter marks um, and do some more marks with your blending stick with the graphite on it. Okay now I think I'm pretty happy with that. So looking at my apple again, I think this apple's probably a little bit rounder than I've got mine. But no, I'm quite pleased with that and I hope you have fun with it. So take care and hopefully you will have a go at doing this and I'd love to see your results. Um, please share them with me. Um, you can get someone to put it on Facebook for me on my page, Santa Costello Artist. And I'd love to see them. Thank you very much.